What is going on everyone? I am Nux Pro and welcome to this Escape from Tarkov guide. In this guide, we're going to go over what medical items you need to bring inside a raid to help you survive. We're going to be going over Gamma and Alpha container players under level 10 and Alpha, Epsilon and Gamma container players over level 10. So we're going to get right into it. So there are five things you need to worry about when preparing your medical items before a raid. The first one is bleeds. This includes your light and heavy bleeds. The second thing is fractures, AKA broken bones. The third is HP. So your actual hit points, you start with 440. Number four is uh, pain. And number five is blacked out limbs. So on the screen, I have all the medical items you can use in the game. This isn't including stims. They're their own separate thing. So let's get into the recommended classes. So if you are a level one through 10 player with an alpha container, what do you bring in? So let's go over HP and light bleeds first. So when you first start the game, you will have these A1 cheeses, which will restore your HP. And you will have the regular bandage, which will stop light bleeds. Keep in mind, if you're a level one through 10 player, you're only going to have access to therapist level one. So you're pretty limited on uh, what you can use. You know, you can do some barter trades and stuff, but we're just going to talk about stuff that you can buy outright with your rubles. So uh, this is the initial setup you can have in terms of restoring your HP and stopping light bleeds. I highly recommend not using the cheeses and the bandage and buy yourself a car first aid kit. This does the job of a bandage. It, it, it stops a light bleed and it will restore your HP and you have uh, more hit points you can restore with this than the A1 cheese. Now, obviously you gotta do what you gotta do. If you have no money and you have to use the cheese and the bandage, that's fine. But um, I recommend buy you're gonna start out with some money just buy yourself a uh car first aid kit and use the cheese and the bandage as the last resort so this is your recommended um item for hp and stopping light bleeds and it's available from therapist level one for only six thousand rubles so no big deal there then you need something for fractures so uh, the only thing you're gonna have available to you is the splint so i would just bring in one splint with you and then you're gonna need something for pain the only thing you're gonna have available to you at therapist level one are painkillers so you're gonna want to throw painkillers in there so this is what you should have in your alpha and the last thing you're going to need, you're going to need an S March. This S March, uh, tourniquet will stop heavy bleeds and you're not going to put it in your alpha because, uh, it's the cheapest item. So if you die and you lose this, no big deal. You can buy another one really cheap. Now, if you are a gamma player, we'll take these two little bolts away. Now we have a little gamma container here. Actually, this is actually a gamma container. Um, you can just throw all your meds in there. No problem. And I would even recommend putting two S marches because I'm finding it pretty common. Now you get into two fights. You might have two heavy bleeds and the heavy bleed will kill you. So um, I recommend if you can carry two S marches obviously this hemostat has three uses it is for heavy bleeds as well but um you're not going to have that available to you so that is my recommendation for you gamma guys now on to blacked out limbs as a level one through ten you are not going to have access to survival kits or cms kits until you get past level 10 and have uh the flea market available to you um, there are barter trades and stuff like that, but we're, we're just worrying about what you can actually buy. Now, the most ideal medical setup. So this is the recommended medical setup 
for level one through 10 alpha container. Now I do recommend if you can to swap out the car first aid kit with a Saliwa, if you can find one, uh, you're able to craft a Saliwa in your hideout uh, in between level one and 10. So if you can, if you can get your hands on a Saliwa, this will make it so you don't have to bring in an S March. I still think you should, because if you, uh, if you uh, use a Saliwa for a heavy bleed, uh, it'll take 150 HP off of the Saliwa. So uh, you got to keep that in mind. I went into a fight without uh, any type of heavy bleed um, item here. And uh, the Saliwa doesn't last long when you're healing heavy bleeds with it. So um, I would recommend still bringing the S March. This would be the ideal uh, setup for the level one through 10 alpha container because this will cover your heavy light bleeds your hp this would uh this will take care of your pain this will take care of the broken bones and if you do get two fractures in a game to use up your splint you can use the painkiller to to kind of negate the effects of the the broken limb so you can get out of the raid and again you can't do anything about blacked out limbs until you hit level 10 and have the flea market available to you uh same thing though if you have a blacked out limb pop a painkiller it'll help you survive the end of the raid so i know i rambled on a lot i'm going to put on the screen now the recommended and ideal medical loadouts for level one through ten Now, once you hit level 10, you have access to everything in the game. This is the loadout you should go with as an alpha container player. So you definitely want the Saliwa. This is gonna take care of your HP, your light bleeds and your heavy bleeds. I highly recommend bringing S March still because if you get two heavy bleeds, um, using the Saliwa is, is it's gonna suck because you're not going to have a lot left to actually uh, heal your HP. So this S March could could be literally a lifesaver. So I'd recommend that. Then um, I would recommend graduating away from painkillers, augmentum and morphine because these are one time uses and get yourself ibuprofen has 12 uses and it's a really good painkiller. And then I would get the uh, immobilizing splint because you can use this five times say you have to jump off something and you break both your legs you have two splints here no problem so now talking about blacked out limbs now you only have an alpha container so you're kind of limited in what you can do here but if you want to bring something that will help black out a limb i actually recommend doing this setup because the painkillers will um help that blacked out limb at least to get you to the end of the raid but if you really want to bring something to uh stop the black limb i would recommend bringing a cms because this will be these will this will be your, your most expensive medical item and then just bringing the cheaper splint and the cheaper painkillers so that's why I recommend if you want something to uh, help with the blacked out limbs. Now for the gamma guys, the gamma is a beautiful thing. So recommend the Saliwa, definitely. Recommend ibuprofen, definitely. Uh, recommend the immobilizing splint, definitely. Um, since you have room, I highly recommend the hemostat take care of all your heavy bleeds leaving the saliwa for the light bleeds and your hp and then you can throw a cms kit in there bam or you if you don't want the immobilizing splint you can throw in the survival kit 
bam you got all your bases covered the survival kit will heal a blacked out limb and a fracture at the same time that's the benefit of, of the survival kit um but i would i would recommend using the cms and the immobilizing splint it seems to um work faster uh in in the situations i've been in and then you got two extra spots where you can throw an ammo or whatever you want the ammo container is huge it really is huge so i'm gonna put on the screen my recommended loadouts for players above level 10. Thank you for watching this video. I didn't go over the Epsilon container because it's virtually the same as the Gamma. Remember, this video was mostly geared toward newer players, even though experienced players use very similar loadouts. The only difference is they'll add in stims. But as time goes on, the more you play the game, you will learn to develop your own medical loadouts. But this is a really good starting point. Again, thanks for watching the video. You can please like the video it helps a lot think about subscribing we're almost at 14,000 subscribers see you in the next video